I've been wanting to see one of these for years. And when Ryan and I go to South Carolina, I always think there's a shot that we're going to see one. And we never do. And all I have to do is cross to the other side, and I should be able to get a pretty good look at it. I'm in Jupiter, Florida to play a show at Florida Atlantic University. While I'm in town, I'm taking the opportunity to see some of the region's most unique species of birds. There are over 700 terrestrial animals, over 200 types of freshwater fish, and 196 species of breeding birds that call Florida home. Unfortunately, there are also a variety of invasive species that have found the climate and resources comfortable. The first of which was nice enough to meet me inside the airport. I'm here in the West Palm Beach Airport and go figure, the first bird I saw here in Florida was the house sparrow. The house sparrow is a non-native species that was introduced in North America and has thrived in environments where humans are present. They now have almost a worldwide distribution and are often seen as a nuisance, although their ability to adapt and live in a variety of different environments could be seen as a sign of their strength as a species. From the airport, I headed to the neighborhood where I would be staying in Jupiter. On the way in, I noted a pond with a group of white ibises and a white-winged dove in the neighborhood. After settling in and lathering on a large amount of sunscreen appropriate for a Wisconsin resident visiting a state near the equator, I decided to walk around the block and try to relocate the dove and the ibises, along with any other notable species. So there's actually some bird feeders that are conveniently located uh, right next to these buildings. And so I think I might have actually just seen the white-winged dove. The bird in question turned out to be a Eurasian collar dove, another species that was not originally found in North America. Eurasian collar doves are named for the black collar on their neck, and the sighting of this species had me thinking that I may have misidentified it as a white-winged dove earlier in the day. Nevertheless, I continued on, noting some other common species such as northern mockingbird, northern cardinal, and common grackle. The common grackles in Florida looked a bit different to me because they are actually a subspecies known as the purple common grackle, which are mostly purple in coloration as opposed to the bronzed common grackle normally seen in Wisconsin. Although I'd only seen common Florida species so far, I was feeling very excited about the day. I always find it so exciting to be birding in a new place where you don't exactly know what's going to be here. Because if I walk around my neighborhoods back home, I can tell you basically what's going to be around every corner, but when you're in a new location, it doesn't even have to be rare stuff, it's just anything you see that's new or different is really exciting. After checking out the bird feeders, I decided to search for the ibises. Right now I'm taking a trip to that pond where I saw the, all the white ibis, and we're going to see if we can find anything else mixed in with them, maybe some other cool wading birds. Upon arriving at the water, I had a flyby of a classic Florida species. Wood stork flying through. The wood stork is listed as a species of low conservation concern, but because they only live in a small part of the United States, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service lists them as federally threatened. After watching the wood stork fly through, I observed a common duck species of Florida, but a new bird for me. These are model ducks. The model duck can be found along the Gulf of Mexico and in most of Florida up into coastal South Carolina. It can be identified by its light and dark brown mottled body, buff head and neck with dark cap and eye line, and yellow or orange bill with a black patch at the base. They look extremely similar in size and coloration to female mallards, American black ducks, and Mexican ducks. In fact, hybridization with other species poses a threat to the continuation of the model duck species on its own. They are dabbling ducks that are mostly seen as pairs and feed on a variety of plants, invertebrates, and small fish. Nests are made near water and each clutch contains 8 to 12 eggs. Model ducks are currently on conservation watch and declined by an estimated 3.1% per year between 1966 and 2015. Their biggest threats are the degradation and drainage of marshes, erosion, development, hunting, and hybridization with other species. In Florida, an estimated 10% of the population contains mallard genetic material. After watching the model ducks, I scanned the water and found a species I was even more excited about. 
Oh, it's a Rosette Spoonbill. No way. That's incredible. Well, as cool as the model ducks are, I, I need to get close to this Spoonbill. I've been wanting to see one of these for years. And when Ryan and I go to South Carolina, I always think there's a shot that we're gonna see one, and we never do. And all I have to do is cross to the other side, and I should be able to get a pretty good look at it. It looks so elegant. It's just this like pink and white shape in the water. There goes a great blue. Well, let me see what some of this other stuff is too. Along with the spoonbill was a tricolored heron, multiple snowy egrets, a flock of white ibises, an anhinga, and more. Moving closer to the water gave me great looks at the bird I was so excited to see, a majestic roseate spoonbill. The roseate spoonbill is a medium-sized wading bird with a stocky body and unique flattened bill that is spoon-shaped at the end. Adults are pale pink with brighter pink shoulders and tail feathers, a greenish-yellow head which is partially feathered, and red eyes. Roseate spoonbills are one of six spoonbill species in the world and the only one found in North America. They frequent coastal regions of some southern states, as well as the borders of certain Central, South American, and Caribbean nations. Chicks are born with normal shaped bills which begin to flatten out around 10 days and are fully formed around 40 days. The bill is used to sweep through the water and find food such as fish and crustaceans. The crustaceans in their diet contain pigments called carotenoids which give them their pink coloration which also occurs in flamingos. Roseate spoonbills nest in colonies with egrets, ibises, and herons and nests are made of sticks, moss, and bark. I am so stoked about this rosette spoonbill. It's just been cruising the shore and then it ran into the great blue heron and the great blue kind of chased it back and then it ran into a common gallinule and it kind of chased that and it kind of created this chain of like birds chasing each other around the shoreline which is kind of comical to watch but he's so cool his bill is just such a unique shape and that bright pink just stands out so much it almost reminds me of a flamingo just uh, you know based on the coloration wow Pleased with my views, I continued walking and couldn't help but notice an abundant species of lizard with an interesting quirk, the curly-tailed lizard. The northern curly-tailed lizard is a species native to the Bahamas and was introduced to Florida in the 1940s. They hold their curly tail up in the air, which makes them easy to identify. They're common in Dade, Boward, and Palm Beach counties, and there is some concern that they may compete with native species for resources. The rest of my walk yielded good looks at a few more species, but it wasn't until the next morning that I would find one of my target birds from earlier in the day. So it's the following morning, I'm headed to my gig, and I found the white-winged dove at the feeder. White-winged doves are on the size of an American robin and can be found in the southern United States into Central America. Adults are brown with a dark cheek line, a white tipped tail with gray underparts, a white stripe at the edge of each folded wing, and blue skin near the eye. They can frequently be found in deserts, but are often seen at bird baths and bird feeders in urban spaces as well. Nests are made of twigs, weeds, grasses, mosses, and other common nesting materials, and are often flimsy, with one to two eggs being laid per clutch. In the 19th century, habitat loss and hunting led to the decline of white-winged doves in Texas, from around 12 million to under 1 million in 1939. Due to management of the species, hunting regulation, and the bird's ability to adapt to living in urban spaces, their population rebounded to around 2.2 million in 2001 and continues to increase. I'm really glad I was able to see the white-winged doves because when I came back out here, <laughs> I found the Eurasian collared dove. For a second I was like, am I going crazy? Was that actually Eurasian collared dove? And so being able to see them this morning, I was really happy that they were actually white-winged doves. After seeing the doves, I headed to my gig, thankful to have seen so many interesting birds. Florida is a true haven for birds, and many unique species can be found in the canals near roadsides and in local neighborhoods. Although many introduced species have found a home in the Sunshine State, the native species such as the roseate spoonbill will always be the most exciting to see. Thanks for watching, we'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. One heck of an itch.
when I originally heard that there were model ducks down here, I thought they looked really similar to American black ducks, and I wondered how I was going to be able to tell them apart, but actually seeing them out in the field, there's just something about them that looks a little different. I don't know if they're a little taller, a little lankier maybe, but when I saw one, I think that's one actually, um, I was just instantly like, that's a model. 